In this lesson, we are going to learn about electroplating. Electroplating is a process that uses electric current. The source of this electric current could be from a battery. The electric current will oxidize and remove the metals from an anode electrode into the solution. In this case, I have an anode made of silver. The electric current will remove the electron from the anode, but once it removes the electron from the metals, it also causes the metals to so it's no longer part of the strip of metals. So now, as you can see, this silver is now part of the solution, which in this case is made of silver nitrate. So you have a bunch of silver ions floating in the solution. The metal ions in the solution will eventually regain its electron by deposit on the inexpensive cathode or just cathode itself. Because if you look at this electrolytic cell, it is the electron are removed from the anodes as it travel through the wire, go through the electrical current source, it will end up in the cathode. This is where the metal ions regain its electron. So the metal ions will start to regain its electron as it's going to deposit onto the cathodes. And this is the same process where they made jewelry that are gold plated or silver plated. That way, the whole entire jewelry is not made of pure gold, but it's coated by gold, so it has that appearance of gold or silver. And the rest of the jewelry will be inexpensive metal. In this lesson, we are going to solve problems that relate to electroplating. To do that, we first have to realize the equation for current is equal to I equal to Q over T, and Q is your charge in Coulomb, and T is your time in second, and this is your current in amps. But we are more likely looking at Coulomb, which is equal to I times T. We are looking for Q specifically because of the Faraday constant. Because the Faraday constant gives us the relationship between Coulomb, which is Q, in terms of moles of electron, and moles of electron relate to the equation. For example, in this problem, we have an electrolytic cell consists of copper anode in a copper sulfate solution. A current of 6 amps is running through a solution of copper sulfate for 60 seconds. How much of copper is plated out? To start solving this problem, we first have to find Q. We need to know about current and time. In this case, this is our time and this is our current in amps. So our Q is equal to current time time, which is 6.0 times 60 seconds. That gives us 360 Coulomb. And once we find Coulomb, we can now solve for most of electron. Before we solve the entire problem, let's look back at the problem and describe the general direction that we are going to take to solve the entire problem. First of all, we really need to know Coulomb because Coulomb is the only one that gives us relationship to mole. So once we have Coulomb, we can find mole of electron using the Faraday constant. Once we find the moles of electron, we can solve for the moles of the metal using the mole ratio. And where do we get the mole ratio from? In this case, we know that it's dealing with copper sulfate, specifically copper. So if we look at copper sulfate, which is CuSO4, the sulfate has a charge of 2 minus, so therefore copper must have a charge of 2 plus. Once we know the charge of copper, we can write the half cells for it, either oxidation or reduction. Since we are talking about plating it out as a solid, we're going to write as in terms of reduction. So we have Cu2 plus, plus, because 2 plus, this must be plus 2 electron, and that will give us a copper solid. So that's where we're going to get a mole ratio. And once we have our moles of metals, the rest is pretty easy to find the mass of metals which is going to be just the molar mass from the periodic table. So let's go back to our problem. We have 360 coulomb. So here we have a coulomb, which is 360 coulomb. And we can use the Faraday constant to solve for moles of electron. Since coulomb is right there, so the coulomb part must be on the bottom. 96500 coulomb. And one mole of electron on top. Notice how the coulomb cancel out. And once we have mole electron, we can find the mole of metals using 
the half cells and the mole ratio. And we look at the half cells, we have two moles of electron equal to one moles of the copper solid. Since this is mole of electron, the bottom part must be moles of electron as well. So exactly two mole of electron. The top part must be the metal, exactly one mole of the copper because there are no coefficients there. Then we have moles of electron cancel out, give us moles of copper. To convert from moles of copper to mass of copper, we need to find the mole of mass of copper. By looking at the periodic table, I have 63.55. Since this is moles of copper, the bottom part must be moles of copper, exactly one mole of copper, because that is the definition of molar mass. On top, we would have the mass, which is 63.55 grams of copper. Notice how moles of copper is cancel out, and we can now simplify this to get our answer, 360 times 1 times 1, which we can ignore, times 63.55 grams of copper, divided by everything on the bottom, which is 96,500 times 2 and times 1. And that will give us our answer. We have 0 0.1185 grams of copper. So this is how much copper is being plated out. Let's try another problem, but we are solving for different variables. In this case, I have an electrolytic cell consists of copper anodes again, in a copper sulfate solution. A constant current is running through a solution of copper sulfate for 60 seconds. And in the process, we have 0 0.5 grams of copper is plated out from the solution. But we are asking for how much electricity in Coulomb is required. That is, we are solving for Q. So first of all, what are we given? We are given time, okay, and we are given in terms of mass of the metals, copper. And lastly, we are giving hints about copper in terms of copper sulfate. So first of all, we know that from copper sulfate, since sulfate has a charge of 2 minus Copper must be have a charge of 2 plus. And we can write the half cells reaction for it, which is Cu 2 plus plus 2 electron because of the charge right there, give us copper solid, which in this case is exactly 0.5 gram. So we are given this in gram. Now, if we look at the half cells reaction, this is where our given is. And we had to go back and look for moles of electron because once we have moles of electron, we can use the Faraday constant to relate it to Coulomb. So let's describe that again. Using our copper sulfate, we have the charge of 2 plus. And then we can write the half cells for copper. In this case, copper 2 plus plus 2 electron equal to copper solid. And in the problem, we are given the mass of the copper solid. But once we have the mass of copper solid, can we solve for moles of copper solid? And if we have moles of copper, we can solve for moles of electron using the mole ratio from these half cells. And once we find moles of electron, we can use the Faraday constant to find the Coulomb. So let me describe that again. We are given in terms of mass of the metals. Once we have mass of the metals, we can solve for mole of the metal using molar mass from the periodic table. And once we find the moles of the metals, we can find for the moles of electron, which is extremely important because this allows us to connect to the Faraday constant and to Coulomb. And that would be extremely easy. This is just the mole ratio from the half cells reaction. And once we find moles of electron, we can solve for Coulomb using the Faraday constant. And that would be the process. So let's solve this problem. We have the mass, which is 0 0.50 grams of copper. And the molar mass for copper again is 63.55 gram. And the molar mass for copper is 63.55 gram. Since this is grams of copper, the bottom part must be gram. So we have 63.55 grams of copper. And the top part must be 1 moles of copper. Notice how gram of copper cancel out. Give us moles of copper or moles of the metals. And using our half cells, we can get the mole ratio to relate to moles of copper to moles of electron. So we have 
two moles of the electron here equal to one moles of copper. In this case, moles of copper are going to be on the bottom to cancel out. And the moles of electron are going to be on top, two moles of electron. Notice how moles of copper cancel out, giving us moles of electron. But we are looking for Coulomb. But here you go, we have the Faraday constant give us Coulomb and moles of electron. How many moles of electron? One moles of electron. Because this is mole of electron, the mole of electron has to be on the bottom, and the Coulomb part must be on top. Notice how moles of electron cancel out, and we have a Coulomb, which is how much electricity that we, how much electricity is required to play out 0.5 grams of copper in this process. The rest is simplified and multiply everything on top, divide everything on the bottom. We have 0 0.0, we have 0 0.50 times 1, which we can ignore, time 2, times 96,500. So we have 0 0.5 times 2 times 96,500 Coulomb. Divide everything on the bottom, which is 623.55 times 1, which we can ignore, and time 1 again. So that is our answer. Then we plug into the calculator, give us, this is how much electricity in Coulomb is required to plate out 0.5 grams of copper.